a study on it. He has partnered with us to help Dennis learn more, do better, feel better. Dr. Brett, catch our audience up. Where are you sitting right now? Tell us a little bit about your dentisting life. Man, I'm glad to be here, Paul. I love what you do for the dental community. Nice. I really appreciate you having me on. So I am Brett. I am a general dentist in Jonesboro, Arkansas, which is a large town to me, but a small town for everybody else that's watching. Um, I'm currently in one of my operatories hiding from my I team. I like it. It's a smart move. So exactly. I'm in the corner. If they find out <laughs> I'm here, you may hear them. <laughs> and uh, I'm just a general practice dentist. I've been in practice 17 years. I have a partner who's my first cousin, and we do just a little bit of everything. We're family practice. I do implants. She does orthodontics. She does Botox. And we just have a family-owned business trying to be better, taking care of our patients every day. I love that. And, you know, even when you – and I've, I've worked with dentists my whole life, but even when we work with a one or two dentists – it can be isolating to be a dentist, you know, stay connected with the community. You were, I love what you said before, you were a lurker learning on these groups, right? Whether it was Right Global or Dental Notches or Dental Town, you know, Link and I, we're not lurkers. We are loud. We're loud, the two of us, but you were lurking. Tell us a little bit how you found out about Right Global and what inspired you to say, hey, I want to learn more about how this group can train me. Well, you're absolutely right. Like I spent all of my early career thinking that I was in a bubble by myself. I was excited about dentistry, but I didn't have anybody that wanted to talk about it with me. Like I'm even married to a dentist and she doesn't want to talk about dentistry with me. <laughs> That's great. So like I was on Dental Town when I was young and then that graduated to Facebook pages like Dental Nachos and Rob Global. Well, Rob Global to me is a Facebook page is where I go to like feel good about amazing dentistry, even though I couldn't do it all myself. So I'd have a hard week and I'd log on the Rock Global Facebook page and I'd see people doing rubber dam, amazing dentistry and just feel good about it. Yeah. And, you know, I got to the fellowship because of that, because I was on that page. I reached a point where I was looking for other CE opportunities and I was following some hands on CEs and then COVID shut the world down and yeah. I couldn't travel. And even if I could travel, I just closed my practice for nine weeks and I'm a private business owner, like no income for nine weeks. Are you going to take off a week and a half to go to CE? Here he is live from Australia. My good friend, Dr. Lincoln Harris, you're dressed so nicely for the morning in Australia, Link. Yeah, this is just how I treat patients with a coat on. Oh, wow. I, I got to wear scrubs, Link. I'm impressed you can stay <clears throat> clean with your... With no, your... I'm telling, telling stories. I did actually have a one of my professors at university used to wear a double-breasted suit, but he was a maxillofacial surgeon. So when he was actually treating patients, he was always in scrubs. So uh, just for his consults. <laughs> um, well, we're thrilled to be here with Accelerating Your Associate Success. We have people watching it on Dental Nachos Facebook Live, people watching it on Zoom. And we're recording this for our audience at home. As you get settled in, I want to remind everyone this is my amazing friend, Dr. Lincoln Harris, founder of Right Global. He's created a fantastic program, training program. I met his brother, Cam Harris, where you can learn from your operatory how to be a better first, faster, second dentist, how to increase your clinical skills, increase your confidence, increase your case acceptance. On the screen here, I'm going to take off Dr. Brett here in a second. But Dr. Brett Link, we interviewed him, and he said you taught him. Ripe Global is a fantastic key resource and sponsor of our group. You can text the word RIPE to 215-543-6454. You will get the best price possible on these training programs. But let's start with a story, Link. Tell us about Dr. Brett. He told me you <clears throat> helped PPO dentist in, in, our, in the US, that's, you know, insurance-based dentist, learn how he could do full mouth rehabs. Let's start with that a little bit. So I think fundamentally, we don't focus on education. So I think that this is a, a crucial point when you think about Right Global. So everyone has all these education companies and we want to fast track your career. And that is a much bigger and more difficult task. What does that mean? That means that <clears throat> when, when you've gone to a course and you've learned how to do rehabs, if you're not actually changing your career, you're getting more income, uh, more interesting dentistry that you enjoy going to work more. If you're not getting those things, then then it, it has been a waste of time. And so Brett is an example of this just laser focus on helping people with their career 
not just being an educator. Uh, <clears throat> and so, you know, Dent, Ripe Global has this, we're a destination for giving you all the resources, tools, learning, the things that you need to advance your career. So when Brett uh, started with us, you know, he's a successful dentist before he started with us, so, and had some experience, uh, but he was in that fairly common trap where, okay, you graduate with a lot of debt in the United States. And then after you graduate, you uh, buy an office, so now you have even more debt, and then you are a slave to that debt. And so you, you get 100% focused on, uh, you know, being successful financially. Then what happens is sometimes you're not really enjoying the work so much and you're not always like deeply proud of your work and so on. And so now I don't know whether Brett actually had these things, like I haven't talked to him that deeply on how he personally felt, uh, but these are just common things. And so <clears throat> what we did with uh, uh, Brett is we, we helped him to be absolutely proud of his work. So what we find with dentists is that they have this balance between uh, competence and confidence. And so uh, when people become both competent, so they can do really great stuff and they become confident, then uh, their career explodes. And that's what happened to Brett. So Brett went from just doing his, you know, daily single tooth dentistry. And then because he knew that he was doing a good job, like he, he's being trained now, he knows he's doing a good job, he's confident that he's doing a good job, suddenly his treatment plans become larger, his waiting list gets longer, and uh, you know, everything improves for him. Well, except that now he's too busy uh, and he has the stress of dealing with being too busy. He has to so hire an associate so he can train them and use Japanese. So this is a great story to check everybody in here. It's Paul, Dr. Nacho Gooden with my awesome friend, Dr. Lincoln Harris from Australia. On the screen is Dr. Brett Burris, a practice owner who now can do full mouth rehabilitations in his own office on PPO fees through the Ripe Global Training Program. So Link, some of these are going to be, we, are, we, do, we should play basketball when you're here, Link, but some of these are going to be layups, but we have new people watching in, we have people on Zoom. How much travel, so we've talked with Dr. Brett from Dental Nachos, we've talked with uh, Nathan, a dental student, we've talked with Dr. Chip. How much traveling did they do to get the training from you and your team? How much out of the office time, where did they go to get their training? I did zero traveling except to the post office to pick up their kit. Actually, I think the kit was delivered to their office, so not even that far. Um, so There's this no is travel. training in your operatory. You get to use your own equipment, your own drills. You guys send, what kind of models do you send to these dentists to teach them? So we send a SIM kit. So normally when you get trained, you go to a lab and you do a, you have a SIM kit, but we, we send that to the dentist. And that's on purpose for several reasons. One is, okay, sure, there is a cost saving, okay? Everyone likes a cost saving. The cost saving is about 85%. So if you learn to do full mouth rehabs or, or advanced restorative dentistry any other way, it'll cost you, you know, many times more, like 85% more. Uh, no, sorry, like eight times more. Okay, it's a lot because the single biggest cost is is time out of your office. Okay, sure, that that's a great thing, but but what is the benefit? And the benefit is that it's like a simulation. You're training with your own handpiece, your own burrs, and your own chair. And that and and if you have a dental assistant who will come in and you can afford to pay them, you're training with your dental assistant. So that's about building a career. And because what I want to ask you. Home, what I want to ask you, Link, for a second here is we've both been dedicated to see for our careers and you've shared what are some of, so we have these dentists watching and I know some of them, I won't violate Zoom HIPAA, but they're great dentists, they're different ages and stages, associates, practice owners. The current version of CE to make yourself better, faster, more confident, uh, help more patients first, make more mm -hmm. money second. What are the limitations of the current way CE is to traditionally delivered whether it's in the US or in other countries? So traditional methods have, uh, well, besides cost and time out of your office, uh, and, and some people want to get away, I understand that, some people don't, but the biggest limitation is how do you implement it when you get home? Implementation is often more difficult than the procedure itself. To yes. implement, you have to, particularly if you go to a traditional course where they say you must use these burrs, you must use this composite resin, 
or composite. Uh, yeah. And uh, this bonding agent, because they're the sponsor, and clearly if someone sponsors your course, it makes the bonding agent stronger. Uh, and so yeah. you have you have all of these things, and then you get home and you okay, now you have to buy new equipment because you trained on that particular equipment. Uh, your dental assistant doesn't know how to use rubber dam. Uh, and so you have all of this. And so you've done two days and you've got all pumped up and you're Tony Robbins fist pumping all over town. Okay. And then you get home and you hit the harsh reality that you don't have the stuff and your handpiece is a, a turbine and you practice on an electric handpiece and you have tapered burrs and they have parallel burrs. Okay. And, and then you maybe have weeks of work. And by the time you have all of that thing implemented, you've forgotten everything you learned at the course and, and you did repetition and also <laughs> it, it's you know uh i've taught these courses and i've taken these courses and they're definitely better than not doing anything but it just doesn't replicate the real world feel i can't even open up some other someone else's laptop and use it so let alone someone else's dental operatory so you get to learn in your operatory let's pause for a second and deliver some value to the people watching in on facebook and also in zoom what how do you make dentists better and faster? I know it has to do with reps. You know, we are taught, you've used the airplane example, the way we're taught in dental school, why does that not lead to fulfillment in terms of efficiency, speed, delivery? Uh, tell our audience a little bit about that, something they could take home with them if they just watch these few minutes. Yeah, so the fundamental difference is when your focus is an outcome, not an education, then you think, okay, what do we do to get an outcome? So how do you get someone to be faster? To be faster, you need two things. You need to be able to do the procedure almost automatically. And the reason for that is when you get stressed and you have a difficult patient, you have communication problems, a big tongue gagging, all of that uses up a lot of your brain power. So you only have a small bit left. And so if you can't do it automatically, the moment you get stressed, your hands slow down. So, and, and, and dentistry is stressful. Like every single day, most of us will hit something that's a bit difficult. <laughs> so we have unanticipated things. Link, I, the, I don't think you're a, a college basketball fan in the US, but I brought my basketball here. And this is what's called March Madness. It's when all the teams play to win the championship. And we've seen people who under stress perform well at the end of games and then other ones who perform poorly, and then you have to know their fundamentals before they go into that game. And let's just be real for a second. Dental school, under the best of circumstances, but especially over the pandemic, where have you seen with your students them fall short of getting them to be dentists who can fundamentally be good dentists each day? I mean, no dental school achieves that because dental school is too short. Like if you want to get dentists who are fundamentally competent and confident when they graduate, you would need dental school to be 12 years long. That's like, it's a surgical specialty. What other surgical specialist is right. trained for five years? It's that simple. It's not that dental schools are necessarily bad. I mean, you can argue about that, but I think that probably running a dental school is more expensive than most people think because you're treating live patients and we know how much it costs to run an office, but it's five years or four years if it's a postgrad degree, okay? Tell me how long it is to train an ophthalmologist or an ENT surgeon in the United States. So then what happens, Link, is let's put a these from both sides. I was an associate in my ad's office. I'm a practice owner now. Our associates are going to take your clinical assessment tool. We're going to talk about that. You you come into an I came into with my dad and his partner, a dentist in their 50s, who knew what they were doing. And I was the slow one. And people didn't always want to see the slow one, even if I did a good job. So what happens in our office is patients can be reluctant to see the newer dentist, not because they don't think that they're nice, not because they don't even think they're going to get to a good job, but where does this speed and efficiency cause a, uh, Cam had said at his presence, a bottleneck or a, a slowdown of the whole practice? Well, actually, like if you employ a dentist, the associate dentist is the literal financial choke point of the entire practice. So unless you are a principal who produces your own work. Principal is their word for practice owner. I will Australian for they call principal us here in the US. That's practice owner, practice owner. So continue. I just wanted yeah, to. So the practice oh, owner, yeah. like, like if, if you're a practice owner who is the dominant producer in your practice, then it doesn't matter so much. Okay. But what a lot of people try and grow to is like a, 
a multi-practice group or a multi-practitioner group, either of. And if you move into that space where you have multiple associates and their combined production is much more than yours, then they are the single most important financial metric of your practice. And you can have all of the Facebook marketing and bottle, you know, funnel coming in. And if your associate can't perform, then it's sad for them, but it's even, it's quite sad for the practice owner because the practice owner isn't, you know, making 35, 40% commission. They've got like this skinny little margin yeah. that they're trying to pay for everything on. So uh, what we have found almost universally is that when you talk to practice owners, particularly multi-practitioner owners, their single biggest challenge is increasing the performance of their associates. And that doesn't just mean like we want more money. I mean, it, you know, almost all people like to earn more, including and definitely practice owners do. But how do you get that? And there's been too much focus on just like, you know, like what you would call MBA stuff, where it's all spreadsheets and, you know, communication and all of these things. But the, the, the real truth is you need a dentist who's really good and competent and who knows it. And if you have a dentist who's competent and they know it, then they tend to be very productive. And as a side benefit of being productive, the patients are happy because they get excellent work. The patients are happy because they have someone who actually can diagnose more complex problems and they don't have to leave and go to another office. You know, like where you see one office for your checkups and then you go, I want veneers and you go to the veneer guy down the street and everyone's annoyed and go, we do veneers too. And you go, but yeah. it didn't seem like it. So, uh, so if I, want to, I want to interject with good ideas. I don't want to interrupt, Link. There's people of all ages and stages watching in. Talk to this dentist. They've been out of dental school for three years. They might've done a GPR. They're working for a large group or a DSO. They don't even know if their principles, as you put it, practice are going to invest them. Why? Is it worth it for them to just invest on their own in this training? And tell us a little bit about the length of the training and the impact it would have. They're an associate dentist. Nobody's paying for it but them. But you say, hey, I wish I had some. Chip Pay, it said, I wish I did this sooner. Brett Burris said, I wish I did right global sooner so I could reap the rewards of it. So I know there are practice owners and groups that may support it. But let's just say you're a three years out of school you're getting better, but you're still struggling. Talk to that person for a second. So that person is going to take about 10 years from when they graduate until they actually go to work and don't feel stressed and know that they're a good dentist. We can take seven years off that process if they want. And the side wow. benefit of that is that they will enjoy their work. They will be less, it'll be less stressful because they know what to do. It will be more fun because they get to do more fun stuff. Because believe it or not, after about five years, doing distal occlusal composites gets really boring. Uh, and it's hard. So it's hard and boring and it's badly paid. Like it's yeah. the trifecta of badness and sadness. Uh, so you get to do stuff that's fun, also well paid. Okay. And often complex dentistry, when you break it down, is actually less difficult because you have full control. Uh, then as a, but, you know, like, how do you pay for this? Well, we find that the, the minimum benefit that someone doing one of our training bits is you know, about 19% uplift in their production. And they can make more money without working more hours and help more patients. Tell us about your own associates. I mean, you know, your own associates, what are they doing more of now that they probably didn't dream of when they started working for you? Uh, so all of I had an associate who actually worked in a big cosmetic dentistry chain. And when she started working for me, she had never done complex restorative. She'd never done rehabilitations. Her cosmetic approach was unidisciplinary. So she was just doing veneers. But now she's doing veneers and crown lengthening. She's doing veneers and crown lengthening and orthodontics. Uh, she's doing rehabs with implants and restorative. And so uh, actually the number of patients she treats is way less the amount of dentistry she does in a certain time frame is way more. Uh, and, you know, I've just started a new associate uh, and what he's doing uh, today is I've milled six crowns for him and in between patients today, he will spend the day shaping crowns because I wanted to know what makes crowns look good uh, and so on. And so he's basically in his second year out, I will have him doing, and he's also, I know he's good, because he's doing our restorative residency. So I was able to look up his preps 
So uh, you took someone from one of your programs to do with you. Now we're going to jump around. Talking to me is not easy. I know, Link. But if someone's right. watching in, they say, I want to learn more about this. I'm not so sure I believe I can learn this from my operatory. You talk to your team about treatment planning your career, but I like your, your this is you here, Link, uh, modeling this. You're not wearing your suit. You're in your scrubs. Mm. Tell our audience, dentists can be skeptical. Have you ever met them? Okay, Link, they're very skeptical. So let's unskepticalify them. How does this work? Dig into the details. They say, I'm going to sign up for the, let's say they sign up for the whole two-year program. People can mm -hmm. text right to 215-543-6454 to get the best price possible from our sponsor, the amazing Dr. Lincoln Harris. But share with them the details of what happens in their operatory. How do you teach them from Australia in the U.S. to place an implant and prep a crown faster? Well, we don't teach them from Australia. We teach them from everywhere because the teachers, if you're in the United States, some of your teachers will be in the United States and uh, some will be in Europe because the time zone works better. Uh, so the way our hands-on works, I'll give you an example. The first hands-on you will do if you're doing the whole program will be crowns on back teeth. It's the fundamental building block of indirect dentistry. And so how we teach that, you put the mannequin, you set it up on your own chair. Usually it's on a Saturday. Uh, you didn't need to fly anywhere. So you literally just got up Saturday morning, went to the office, put it on. If your office doesn't let you in, we have another kit that allows you to do it on your kitchen table or on your back veranda, wherever you want to. Uh, in that case, you need to buy a very cheap compressor from a hardware store, which will be like half the price in the United States that they are here and they're cheap here. So, uh, And then we go, right, we've sent you a video on how to do crown preps. You've got the first, we want you to do a crown prep on the lower right first premolar. You have 20 minutes to go. We don't tell you anything. We've already shown you on a video. We've sent you pictures. We tell you nothing because this is the best way to learn. The best way to learn is to try and then get feedback and try. It's not to have someone try and teach you before you try because it's impossible. It's like saying, okay, I'm going to tell you all about how to paint like Picasso. Okay, let me give you a lecture on how to paint. Like that's stupid. So, <clears throat> so what we do is go. It's a plastic tooth. If you mess it up, we don't care. And then, so then everyone's under pressure because it's 20 minutes, like the real world. And then after 20 minutes, they take photos with their clinical camera and upload them. And the level of detail we can show you from anywhere in the world is far superior than if we sat beside you and pointed with a probe. Like you can see every ding in the adjacent contact point where you weren't supposed to hit the tooth, but you did. You can see all of your undercuts. You can see your J preps all of this stuff. And so the feedback loop is massively more powerful. In fact, if I was in a sim lab, the only way I could achieve this level would be for you to take photos and then upload them to a computer in front of you and then look at them on the screen, in which case, why the heck would we fly anywhere? That's silly. Right. So uh, it's just simply better. The dentists learn 50% faster than if you're in a sim lab. So if you want to learn slower and more expensively, we can put a sim lab on for you. It will cost you eight times more and you'll get a worse result. Or you can learn in your office with your own things at 85% less and get a better result and about 50% faster. So then like to give you an example how the day would go, then, then we go, right, you've done one in 20 minutes. Here's the feedback. We go through the feedback and then we go do another so one. So this is where I want you to point. I, I don't know if you saw one of those videos I made with my daughter teaching her basketball and making her take shots. This is what I want you to bring to life for us who sometimes how many let's talk about your crown prep boot camp your your the poop the piece that every dentist wants to do better faster every associate wants to improve how many crown preps are they going to do on that day on that day they will do 17 17 crown preps so that my audience <clears throat> watching is the magic because why is doing it that many times and getting feedback does that automatify it for you? Is that the is that the goal? Yeah, I mean, by the end of so the first at the start of the day, it doesn't matter. If I got you in the course, Paul, and I said you've got twenty minutes to do a crown prep, I'm personally going to inspect it after twenty minutes. Even you are going to be nervous. Yeah, You're going to be stressed. And then by the end of the day, if you've done seventeen, you haven't stopped for morning tea because that's not that sort of course. This is a real. This is a simulation. It's not. If you want entertainment, go somewhere else. Okay. If you want, uh, you know. Like if you'd want to go and just party and drink, then that's a party, not, <laughs> we're not helping you. Um, you haven't had, you've had maybe 15 minutes for lunch, like the real world, because most dentists don't have an hour and a half for lunch. 
And then by the end of the day, you're a bit tired, like real dentistry, you know, your shoulders are a bit stiff, your arms are a bit sore, you've been prepping all day, you're tired, fatigued. And then we say to you, do a crown prep on your lower right first premolar, the other one, you've got 10 minutes and everyone can do a perfect prep in 10 minutes. Like it, it, they've just done so many. There's, what else in the world can you, what other physical task in the world can you learn by hearing about it? Good, done. There's, there's so many limits to any kind of verbal instruction, but especially physical verbal instruction. So uh, everyone watching here on Zoom or on Facebook Live, please feel free to ask chats, not your team. Please share the YouTube links to Nathan, the dental student, Chip and Brett. Now link, uh, people can take a, Part of your module, they just want to do crown prep so they can do a entire FRD. What is the benefit if someone buys all in and after the two-year process of doing everything, what are the skills they're going to do? They're going to have restorative skills. What else is included in that? So if you do the full restorative residency, so you're quite right. You can do part of it. And if you talk to one of our advisors, they will help you work out what's right for you. Because what we want to do, just briefly, is... We want to work out, it's like a patient. We want to work out where you are, where you want to go in your career, like how much money do you want to earn? What procedures do you want to do? You know, how many hours do you want to work? Uh, and then how do we get you there as quickly and efficiently and cost-effectively as possible? That's what we do. And so, uh, so, to, so if someone doesn't need to do, learn how to do, back teeth crowns because they've done 75,000, then we're not going to waste their time and get them to do that. But if you're a, a younger dentist, then the advantage of doing the entire two years is first of all, it's less expensive, obviously, if you do the whole thing, then you do it in bits and pieces. So it's more efficient. Uh, and it will take you from a dentist who's kind of struggling to one who can confidently do like, like, you know, you're doing a good job in when you do a posterior composite, you know that you're doing a good job. And I want to jump in and say, so we've interviewed, you've had dental students take it, you've had associates, but Chip really rings a bell because Chip had, he is a practice owner of 25 years. And he said he knew more about veneers and ortho than class two composites. And he was frustrated it's class two composites weren't working out well. So he took this program just to make his routine everyday dentistry less annoying and, and less of a hassle because it's, you do see dentists take a lot of courses on fancy stuff and then perhaps not pay attention to the fundamentals as much. Is that an accurate way of saying it? Yeah, I'd say that. But also um, one of the things I think that Chip learned is that the, if you learn attention to detail on basic things, you also have attention to detail on fancy things. There's, there's no situation where you can go, I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to be like loose and woolly with, composites but super precise with full mouth rehabs that's just not a thing like uh attention to detail is not something you can just i always learn a new phrase when i talk to you link loose and woolly i'm going to start saying that around eight i was going to say loose as a goose but i wasn't sure i was trying to think of a saying but all my sayings were australian or sounded probably rude and so i was thinking what i want to share we'll spend another i know you have five or ten minutes here if you're watching on zoom and you have a question just put it in the q a uh, if you're watching on Facebook, I'm gonna, now, Link, I want to just shift gears for a sec. So we talked about the ripe continuum that exists over and over, different classes. We're helping share this. You're amazing sponsors. People can text ripe to 215-543-645 for my team will drop in on both Facebook Live and Zoom, how you can do a demo. But you are coming in person in April. We have about 20-ish tickets left. This is going to be a three-day event. On Friday, it's going to be about the business of dentistry, practice ownership, uh, hiring associates. I'm going to do most of the heavy lifting link. I brought my weight here, heavy lifting. Then on Saturday, I'm going to pass the ball to you and sit in the back with coffee or a glass of wine because you're taking over Saturday. If someone was going to come to your course on Saturday, your advanced treatment planning boot camp, you're, you're to see Lincoln Harrison person. What is this Saturday going to be like? Why should they come on Saturday? What are they going to learn? So they should come because first of all, it'll be fun. Yes, okay. that's we'll true. Be, will be fun. Uh, I'm nearly as funny as Paul Goodman. Close. Uh, You're taller. I'm funnier. That's that's what the studies say. Uh, and so, if, first of all, we're going to have fun. 
Secondly, we are going to learn treatment planning the way that we teach crowns. We are going to smash through a lot of them because the, the, the difficulty with treatment planning is not the treatment. Most dentists know what should be done, but they have all sorts of internal barriers like, oh, but if I plan orthodontics, what if the patient doesn't like it? And they sit there and agonize about all the, or should I do a root canal or not? You know, they're, like they're planning 10 crowns and they go, should I do root canals on these things? And they spend three days thinking about this. So I'm going to help you get over the barriers so that you can treat and plan even complex things really quickly. And there's no research that shows that taking many days to do a treatment plan makes it any better. In fact, I would argue that most of the times when dentists overthink things, they make it worse. Yeah, so absolutely. we will teach you not to overthink so that when you get confronted with someone with what I would call, you know, a snaggly mouth, yeah. uh, that you know exactly what to do uh, and you approach it with confidence. And then that will result in you having much higher treatment acceptance. If you're a really new grad, I can guarantee you that the number of patients who say yes to your crowns will go up because I will teach you a simple phrase that uh, increases your case acceptance with ceramics massively. Uh, and it works in all countries of the world uh, that I've tried so far uh, because it stops you from doing what we call waffling, waffling yeah. on. Uh, do you use that term, waffling? We do, we do that. Yeah, dentists are wafflers, and that's part of the problem. They, they are, we're, we're, we're so messed up by our dental school experience. We're sometimes just have such a problem talking with conviction about anything because we talk to patients like they're other dentists and not many people treat other dentists. And instead, patients kind of respond like normal people. So you've done so much amazing things for Dentistry Link. You're coming to hang out with us. Is there anything else you want to share with our audience about your teaching team, about our okay. courses? So I'm going to give you, I'm not going to do a preview, but I'm going to give you a teaser. Okay. Uh, Rock Global is just in the process of launching a bunch of things that are world firsts in almost any form of career advancement or training. And uh, we will do a full demo for you uh, and your group. Uh, I promise you'll be the first that we demo this too. So what this, this set of tools does is it helps people fast track their career. So one of the difficulties when you're a dentist at various stages, is you go, what do I need to do? To, to get to where I want to go. What I've actually got to do. And right, Global has just built a tool. It's an AI-driven assessment tool. So it's a clinician development tool. And you go through, it asks you a bunch of questions, and then it guides you, almost gives you a treatment plan for your career, as it will. It takes about 10 minutes. Uh, it's free for dentists to use. So any dentist could use this. So uh, the development team say, I can't demo it for you because they want to, <laughs> it literally got turned on last night and they don't want me to discover a major bug in it on live streaming with you. So <clears throat> it's a very popular channel, Nacho TV. A lot of people watching it, so I don't blame them. Okay. I'm, I'm going to show you what the screen looks like, but I'm not going to demo it. Okay. I'm going to give you. As you do that link, we have a great question. I love this, dent this, this dental student. He's great. Uh, connect with him on Instagram too. Is it worth it to buy this course at the beginning of your third year, having worked with only a few patients, or should I wait until my fourth year to purchase the two-year course where I've worked on more patients? Any thoughts on third or fourth year? So in our experience, it takes about seven years off your time it takes you to get to the same point in your career. So at whatever point you want to accelerate your career by about seven years, uh, that's up to you. So if you want to, uh, at the end of your, you know, sixth year out, be where you would otherwise be at about, you know, 13 years out, then that's up to you. So we have, as I said, we've had a dental student start it just before he finished. And I was really confused. And I called him and said, what's going on? Like you're a dental student. He says, well, he says, I'm graduating in three months after this course starts. And I don't really know how to do much. Like I've got all this knowledge from dental school, but I don't actually know how to do crowns. And I don't know how to do, like not confidently. And I said, but you know, how does a dental student afford that? He said, he said, after you've spent half a million bucks on dental school, yeah. like, he said, the, the amount that this course costs is like, you know, literally 
two months of dental school, something like this. And I get two years of training. I actually learn how to do stuff. So the return on investment is insane. Like if you look at the return on investment of your dental school, and then you look at the return on investment on this, like most of our students within a couple of years get a return on investment. Like some of them get a return on investment up to close to 300%. Like they literally pay for it in three to six months. Uh, and unless- then, The whole point too is as Link does this, if you want to make, if you can show us the, the teaser screen link, but it's not just about, and then Link has made this clear, it's about how you feel when you walk into the operatory. I've been a dentist for many years. I was helping one of the dentists in our dental office today on the phone with a stuck implant abutment on the phone saying, hey, do this, do this, test out this way. Being confident inside of your operatory is totally priceless. And it doesn't mean things are not going to go sideways. It just means you know what to do when they go sideways. And you can never start learning that early enough in your career. So Link, um, I'll let you, do you want to show the screen before we wrap yeah, up? I'll do, a little, I'll do a quick teaser, but we will come on very shortly. First, you'll be first in the world to get expose. This is an absolute game. I like training. being first in the world. That's perfect. Put that down, Nacho team and job. It's going to be an First in the world, game. us. Um, uh, it's going to be a game changer. Like not just for dentists, but for practice owners, this will be like the biggest revolution in practice ownership that, that has been, I don't know for how long, maybe maybe since they put in computers. We're excited. Are we going to do it before the April course or is it be after the um, April course? Uh, we can do it. Like um, I, I've been told that we can re we can demo this after Thursday. So All right, next week, I'm, Nacho team, get them on for... for. Hey, let me just see. Um, let me let's see, see the I'm screen now. Uh, I mean, also, Nacho team, just up. What I would encourage you guys to do as Link brings this up is just do the free demo. Talk to his team. Find out where you are. There's no cost to do it. They're in Australia. Many of these are at night. So you can do it at 8.30, 9 p.m. at night. Nacho team, just drop this link in here for Link and just schedule a demo. There's no obligation to do anything. They are awesome sponsors. You do save money because I, you know me, my grandmother would say you're very lucky to know me. They're sponsors of the group, but it's just an awesome opportunity for you to assess yourself and figure out how to accelerate your career. Okay. Uh, can you see that? I can see it. Uh, okay, I'm I'm going to be, hang on. You see you. Yeah, is it still computer. recording? Can you check if it's still recording? Because I think I'm being gazumped by Apple privacy at the it's moment. It's still recording. You want me to unrecord it? We're still on Facebook. No, 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 no. keep recording if it's still okay. recording. But anyway, uh, what I can say, so if you go to ripeglobal.com, okay, uh, you will find, if you scroll down, it says, there's a bit here that says, I am a dental student or early in career or experienced dentist. So you click on one of those uh, and then you can say what you want to learn. Okay. And then you can go here to a thing called discover your career pathway. So you click on that. Let's see if my internet will work while I'm doing this. Okay. And then if you scroll down here, treatment plan your career, you can fill in, it's free for a dentist. You can fill in a, a thing and you can talk to one of our uh, advisors. So right now this tool is not uh, free to use until you talk to one of our advisors. So it, it's just because we want them, uh, particularly in the early stages, it's still in beta. Uh, we want people to have someone guide them through it. Uh, beta is beta over here in the US. I have to always tell you. It's, it's like, beta. say deposit okay. the US way again, please. <laughs> yeah, beta. It's in beta. It means that uh, we're still... Uh, keeping an eye on the results because you know what AI is like 99% yeah. of the time it's accurate hundred percent of the time. Anyway, so if you go into there, you can go into it. I'll show you what it looks like. I'm not going to go through the whole thing. So when you get the tool, it looks like this. Okay. It goes through general questions, uh, learning objectives, restorative orthodontics, implantology, and then your production and clinical metrics. So you will need to know a few of those things. Uh, and then when you, uh, finish it, it's going to give you a restorative confidence score, an orthodontic confidence score, implantology confidence score, and it's going to make recommendations for what you should do. And then on top of that, it's going to suggest you know, what type of course you might do and then what your return and investment might be. So uh, we are quite confident that that's all I'm going to show you for now. Actually, there's one other thing I will show you, but I won't demonstrate that either. Every dentist in the world right now 
and use. I've got this issue where oh, it's it's a little. Even you are... Sorry. No, that was that was watching the Facebook Live at the same time. Take a take a good screenshot of us to Nacho team for sharing. Okay. Media. Every dentist in the world right now can start using our CPD tracker. So it is free for every dentist in the world. So or every course you go to, not just ours, you can take a photo of your, uh, you can take a photo of the course certificate, upload it. You can put in what your requirements are for every two years or three years for your state board. Uh, and it will keep a nice list. So if you ever get an audit from your dental board or from a lawyer, from a patient complaining, you have a nice list of everything. There's a little pie chart up here that tells you whether you've met your requirements and how far you've got to go in the current time frame, and if there's any areas that you've missed. So go and use that credit tracker. It's free for everyone. Uh, we built it for our own students because they needed their own things tracking, and we thought, why not open it up to the rest of the world? So there's that will make your life much easier whenever you get an audit by a dental board or anything like this. Okay, so free tracker and then the clinician development tool. Uh, I'm going to turn that off now. I will do a demo for you uh, very soon. And well, that'll be to be continued, like Rocky too. If you watched all the Rockies, watch them all before you come. There's six of them, I think, maybe even seven. Um, well, Link, this has been awesome. I love uh, what you share. We're going to have a great time in April. People are proud to be associated with anything that they do at Right Global. They're fantastic sponsors. You can visit uh, dentalnachos.com to learn more about them. You can text the word RIPE. RIP to 215-543-6454. Like most dentists, Link can't take a compliment. So I want to share this right now that when Link did come to Philadelphia and share with us an amazing one hour course on how to increase your clinical confidence, speed and communication and case acceptance. One of my most favorite dentist nachos, dental practice owner said this should be required watching for every single dental student, and every single dentist. So if you'd like to watch that course for free, my team will put that in the chat and you can also get that free course by texting right mm -hmm. to 15-543-6454. Link, don't go jump off just yet. I'm going to go off of Facebook Live. Thanks so much, guys.